Okay, so I'm going to record a game turn of uh, uh, Rommel and Tunisia here. It will include the uh, the top of the week so interface, and then one of the weekly game turns. Um, I'm not going to move the camera about too much because uh, that will just make it sort of slower and probably a bit messier. Um, most of the action is going to happen around here anyway. The rest of it you just kind of best consider as you know off map commentary so um we start the interface with reveal strategic air units so that happens in the box over here and um we have uh 30 points against axis um 30 54 66 points which is what we've been having for a few turns now so we add that to the uh, weekly uh, uh, national strategic advantage, which at the moment is with access. We find that here oh, we're on week seven, by the way. Um, uh, so we find that here for the axis, it's five. They started out with uh, nine and then went up to 20, had 20 for a while. So they built up quite a few points. So um, we add that to 5, so it's at 66, so that's 71, divided by 2 is um, um, 35, let's say, and then add that to the base, 25, so that's 60, is it not? Um, so I'm going to just quickly add in 10, 1, 2, 3, 30, to the, uh, the Italian First Army, and 30, 1, 2, 3, to the um, uh, German first, uh, fifth army. Then we determine the, uh, the allied points and that was given in the game week. So that's 18, which they've been stuck at for a long time now. I'm going to give them nine for air and nine for their army. And I will put in, just arbitrarily put in, because the axis have got so much at the moment, it's not too, much of a bother, give them 10 each from that, those points that I dished out to the army, to the air attached to the army. Um, uh, then we determine initiative, and uh, so we add up the tens of one of the Axis armies and the tens of, of um, the allies to a die roll. So the Axis get four and they're adding on five, the allies are adding on not even one, so... The Axis can choose whether to take initiative or not. For the next three turns, they will take the initiative. Uh, then we allocate air units choose to the strategic box. So they're pretty much going to stay there. The uh, Allies have got a little bit more they are able to add. Uh, but unfortunately, they always have to... They have bombers. They have to add bombers and fighters equally. So they've got bombers uh, available off map in Algeria but they don't have the fighters to match them so they they got Mitchells and Marauders there but they don't have the lightnings to protect them so they unfortunately can't still can't be added so they will be waiting and um and so we just count up so they spend six of the nine they just got for their air force to put those in the strategic box and the Axis are spending uh, 12 a turn to match that, which they can easily do at the moment. Okay, and um, then uh, we could, uh, if any uh, core headquarters were disrupted, depleted, etc., we could deal with that at this point. Oops. Okay. Um, uh, now we go to the game turn. So we go to the first game turn. On the top of that we roll for weather. That's six. Um, we're in December. That's going to be weather of fair. So we have fair weather that for the turn. That is great. Then we check for outer communications units. Now on the map at the moment, um, the Allies all are able to trace communications this way. And the Axis are all able to trace communications that way. Except for we have a... a, a, a airfield there which is ostensibly allied controlled but it's surrounded by axis units so controlled airfields have a, a garrison of one point no zone of control 
uh, until they are taken. The Axis are not bothering to attack them, spending a hot point, but to do that it would just take a week, a whole week, three turns to gradually bring that um, uh, into uh, surrender. Um, so, uh, so, so then what we do is we check any, any, so that, that's, I, I should have put that on before, that's out of supply market. Any units which, are, I mean, out of command, which out of supply, same thing, essentially, this game. Any units which are out of command at the beginning of this phase, they become depleted. If they were depleted at the beginning of this phase, they become disrupted. And if they were disrupted at the beginning of this phase, still out of command, then they are uh, eliminated for surrender. Um, so that's how that works. Um, you can see we have a number of disrupted markers on the map, uh, but because they are in command, then they are not affected by that procedure. Um, then um, I would uh, add supplies to any any headquarters that had spent them, and I've already factored that in just to save a bit of time. Uh, so if they're in command, I'd spend one command point to flip them back to their normal condition. Uh, then we can, like here, and the, both sides perform these equally at the same time. So we have a leader here. He can spend a command point, then being in command, um, to which they're going to do to, to remove the disruption from that stack. Um, the Allies are at a big disadvantage at the moment because they've got, they have their core headquarters here, they have one division headquarters, and that's then consequently only two um, leaders. Where is the other leader? The other leader's here, he was used in combat at the end of last turn. Um, uh, so they can't undisrupt all their disrupted stacks very quickly. That one's actually a disrupted ally uh, axis stack um, because of the, the attack from here using their air, well, actually their air from the off map box um, to uh, try and push back uh, the um, axis there who actually t chose to take a disruption instead of moving back. Disrupted units cannot attack. So that will slow the axis down somewhat. Um, okay, so we've performed all those, so we can rebuild units, upgrade, maybe place improved positions. So again, you need a certain amount of stacking points, three stacking points, which is essentially three battalions or a brigade um, in a hex to do that. Um, it, all it does is it adds a tactical advantage point in combat so if you've got lots to spend it's probably worth it but at the moment I think the allies need to concentrate on their manoeuvre possibility um, uh, then we would uh, place reinforcements oh dear I forgot to get the reinforcements out of a handy tray so it's obviously very handy to break down your reinforcements um, into turns. Fortunately we don't have too many for this turn so this won't take so long because um, uh, that's broken down into the weeks and each week being three turns I just need to distribute this between the three weeks on the, our little rondel over here. Um, so using our weekly listing here. We have Axis land reinforcements. There's three, they all come in on game turn one, and the American land reinforcements, they all come in on game turn three of this week. So that was easy and quick enough. That was all we had to, to do. Um, so uh, reinforcements come along, and then we activate air units. Um, so essentially that will mean uh, I'll spend three points from the Allies to activate the air units here at Bone Airfield. One, two, three, that's it. They've run out. So that's... Now because this is the top of the game turn, we can do this every game turn. But um, this is the first game turn of the week, so they're... If they... Now, just a quick note, uh, it says in the rules that at the end of each game turn, even if you didn't use an active air unit, you turn it back over so you have to reactivate it the next time. I'm not actually doing that. 
I'm just saying they're activated, and once used, then they become deactivated. A4, it's a hassle, you know, flipping out back and forth, back and forth all the time. And B, because I'm finding the air just doesn't get used so much, except for these um, Axis ones that are always available. Um, the air's just too costly to use, and uh, I'm, try I'm trying to get into so I'm toying with that as a house rule at the moment. So anyway, so these have been activated. Um, and the uh, Axis don't have any... Oh, they have one on map, so they will activate one. They've got three which they're transferring. Um, so they're going to transfer... So they have their air... Uh, we're all at this air base here at the moment. They've transferred three, so they're now on the rondel. They'll come in on turn two of this game turn. It takes three turns or a whole week. So they started last week, last game turn week. And um, they will come in, so they're going to be brought forward to maybe this space or maybe that one when that one's available um, to help protect these because now um, we're very close to the Allied air capability, so they're bring, starting to bring it in more, although they don't have so many points. Um, to activate them with. They've still got more possibility to strike out with the air, so the Axis needs some air protection now. Um, okay, and then we go into the actual player, first player turn. So in this case, that is Axis. Um, oh, place reinforcements. So place their reinforcements on the port up there, where they're entering at Berserta. Um so active player moves units, entering reinforcements, etc. So immediately what we got here is a stack with a new headquarters, the 234th Division, with two with one infantry unit and a leader from that. So the infantry is going to stack. They can be semi-motorized, which means you can get some trucks to bring them up. So we spend a point uh, from German 5th Army and move them up. Um, so that's one, two, three, four on road, five, six on highway, seven, eight, nine, ten road, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, um, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. So that's their thirty movement points because it's fair weather, not mud. We've got all 30. So they've moved. Then um, these are going to have to attack. They're going to move up the headquarters there. So that's one. Um, what's this headquarters doing there? Oh, right, yeah. There's infantry in there. No, that will. I think that was supposed to be there. I think I must have moved them. So that will be another two to here. And um, oh, I could have moved that disruption because I had a leader on there, so I'll just spend the point to have removed that disruption. Um, so that's two command points for all that. Um, then these fellows here are armour so there's no way they can enter the mountains here they could go up the hills but not the mountains so they'll spend one point to, since they're motorised move here that's um, a s 10 over the river and being tracked and 4 into the upland so that's 14 that's half of their movement they don't have enough to get over that river too, so they will remain there for the turn. The Italian's turn. This is disrupted, so he has no zone of control, so he can keep moving. 10, 15 to there. He's infantry, so he doesn't have to pay anything for that. Um... Ah, so that, of course, sorry, was supposed to be there. Okay, this... So I'm going to move this headquarters up, but I just kind of have to te check the stacking. We've got a um, 
cascade there. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's too much there with all of them together. So here I have to go there. But the headquarters can come up to here. So that's another point. And the advantage of that is for the headquarters being here, directing attack this way, we could have a possible breakthrough movement. Uh, that's the Italian army, so I'll move their marker. Um, then we've got Major General von Brauch, 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 something like that. Um, the core is here, so we've got enough movement points for that to command them all. Um, they can stay there where they are. There's a camp group here. Wait, now we have to be careful because the allies have spread out. If we're chasing them, we have to attack. And I can use some of the air to, so, you know, so for example, if that fellow was here, um, these have to be attacked and these have to be attacked. He can't attack them both together, so I'd have to have a soak off attack on him using air units. Um, uh, so I'm not sure that I want to do that. So, um, let's just make this very conservative at the moment for the sake of brevity for the video. So they will stay where they are for now. Um, no, these infantry, let's bring them here. They can support uh, this attack. Okay, so that's um, active movement phase. Now the reserve movement phase, which is the other side. Um, you can't move if you're in a zone of control, but you can move into a zone of control if, and uh, there's a house rule from online guys who develop this so that is only um you can move into zone control if you have a unit already there um otherwise you can't move into enemy zone control yeah which discounts something which i mentioned in my i'd forgotten about that as um in my coverage last so um so you can't like pounce into and force him to attack you if he wasn't already going to do so. Um, now this is a disrupted unit, so he's essentially just a tiny speed bump, as is this, uh, as, as are lots of them. So um, I he can't move there because he's that's big enough to exert his own control into there, so... I think he's going to remain there. I think that's all we can do. Uh, we could maybe withdraw, but they're there to create a screen. So, um, he's going to stay in that blocking position. Uh, this one is going to move. Uh, he's disrupted, so he has to move towards. He can't move. He has to move towards a supply source if he's going to move, or he can stay where he is. So he's going to stay where he is. Um, okay, so that's that. So no, natural reserve movement. Then we go to the combat phase. First, we remove. Uh, we would put friendly air transfers down, but we have that's not occurring now. Then um, friendly air units have flown to the hex, the combat hexes. So I'm going to. Bring this to that one. Uh, this one to that one. Uh, they're flying all the way over from um, Sicily. This one, to, this one, it's a bit of overkill, um, and this one to this one, but we'll see. Um, Okay, then um, the Allies can respond, and they really have got their reason now, so they're going to respond back. Uh, uh, 
and I think they're going to double up on that one. Um, so then we do the uh, air combat, or if it was solely air units attacking, which we don't have, they would do their combat. Um, okay, so we have 24 versus 9 is 2 to 1 odds for the attacker. It's adjusted by pilot quality. So, oh, they got a 6, minus 2. Um, those are Americans, so it's, yes, yeah, so it's just minus two, so that's four, which is attacker abort, so I'm, f oh yeah, you, yeah, sorry, it's, no, it's, you add it, so high roll's bad, in fact, for air combat, so they are both abort. So they're sort of beaten off, unsuccessful. Uh, and here we've got one to one. And a roll of six again, so really unlucky. Allied air cover. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, that was too far to reach there, so I have to say that that was, would have been for that one, let's say. Okay, um, and then we go in for the battles. I. I guess I won't have to run all of them for you. Let's run this one first. So disrupted his one strength. So they've got enough combat strength. That's definitely going to be five to one. Um, but because he's he gets tactical advantage of one, but their germs tactical advantage two, combined arms three, etc. etc. So that will keep them on the five to one column. And then because this headquarters will spend a point. And I'm going to spend a point from um, the, the core. Um, okay, so he's so that will give four, five, six for the leader, a seven for the headquarters, um, onto the die roll. So then I'm looking at the combat results. Oops, sorry, terrain effects chart. <laughs> combat results table, we're on the five to one column. I roll a four plus seven is eleven, and that's the breakthrough. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, so you see, you need all that support to obtain decisive results, even when you have massive superiority in force. Um, because we, we would have had. Uh, Three, four, plus six, ten, ten to one basic odds, but five to one being the highest we can get on the table. So um, the units back here under the headquarters can break through. Um, so with the breakthrough, he has to disrupt, he already is, and retreat four hexes. One, two, three, four. Uh, they can automatically advance after combat. They have to stop with the enemy. They can't follow there. And then when we go to the um, breakthrough phase, they will get a chance to move and fight again. So it continues. Now this will be a bit more evenish battle. So the defender is on one, two, three, four, five points. Fortunately, the leaders don't count in defence. Um, Five points against the attacking six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's two to one odds. Um, the headquarters is going to spend again. And again, the core is going to spend again to join in. So um, two to one odds. But then the defender, if we look, is behind a river and... In. So he's behind a river, so tactical advantage of two, and he's on upland, tactical advantage of three. So I'm just using this track here to record tactical advantages of dice or modifier. So that's three for the allies. Um, also, we check if there's any special units. Um, no. Uh, uh, one for having armour, combined arms on defence. Um, then the Axis 2 for being German, um, 
they didn't have any special units. Yes, they did. They had one there. So these are sort of highly trained, highly specialised units. So that's another tactical advantage. So the difference is, um, oh, and for combined arms uh, with air as well. So the difference in tactical advantage is for the benefit of the attacker. Otherwise it would have gone down on the, the odds column. So we were on two to one, goes up by one to three to one. So we're on the three to one column. Then we have the dice roll modifiers, none for the defender and Four, five, six, seven for the leader the, and the two headquarters for the attacker. We roll the dice, the best we can get. So seven plus six is 13. So 13, on, oh, three to one. Not a breakthrough, but it is nothing for the attacker and automatic disruption for the defender. And automatic disruption also means um, retreat to hexes. So those are, and oh, and because we rolled a six, a natural six, if that's followed by another um, six, the defending leader is eliminated. No, so that was lucky. So Major General Eve Law gets to live another day. One two and they are disrupted so these can advance after combat ignoring any zox that aren't actually there anyway but no breakthrough from these units with a headquarter in the rear there okay so um then so then i'll do some more combats so i'll do those later just to keep this a bit briefer. Uh, so then, so the combat phase is finished. Then we go through the breakthrough phase. These now have 10 movement points. That's all um, to move and perform any more combat. As that is, I've got armoured, infantry. Uh, yeah, armoured, infantry. So there's not a lot they can do with only 10 movement points in this type of terrain. So they're, they're only going to get to go up there. They could say go, well, let's see, um, they could get on the upland 4-4 four, four, and then swamp would be 15 points. So they couldn't go into the swamp. So essentially they can go like up to here. Or they can go into there. I think I'll just put them there. No, I'll put them here, or else they're going to be depleted for movement. No, because it, it'll be in the upland. That'll be okay. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but there, just to give you some idea of what you can do. And then um, we would do the other player turn. So the way that's sort of going to look is essentially um, uh, these units here are all infantry they're moving out of harm's way oh I haven't done those combats uh, and that disrupted unit has no zone of control so he wouldn't be forced to attack back um, so he could stay where he is if, if there's no um, command points to move them or you want to keep them there I think that's probably enough we've come up to half hour and that gives an idea of a of a player turn so the allies will do their similar movement then the axis will get any reserve movement they want to do um, uh, then we go to the combat phase any breakthrough and then that's it and then we go to the next game turn we do two more of those and that's the end of the week then we go back to another top of the week interface as we did at the beginning of this video so that gives you some idea of how this game plays out.